for what we're experiencing today. Yeah. True faith. A true relationship with God is getting hard to find. Yes, I talked with the elderly gentleman this past week. He said, it's a shame that you have to search and search and search for a church that preaches the truth. Amen. That wasn't the way it was 50 years ago. You could go into any church and hear the gospel straight from the word of God. Amen. But now... We are contending for this faith to make sure it stays true, make sure that the Word of God is not done away with and just the things of man spoke. So we're going to look at this chapter tonight. And I, I would like to just read through and, and come back if you would afford me that tonight. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. So let me speak that over you tonight. Amen. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. I don't know about you, but I need mercy, I need some peace, and I need some love. Amen. So I speak that over us tonight. And that's why Jude said, may this be multiplied to you. Beloved, I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality, and gone after strange flesh or set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil over dignitaries or of dignity. That sounds like the day and hour we live in, doesn't it? Yet Michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses dared not bring against him a reviling accusation but said, the Lord rebuke you. Right. Amen. You know, we're easy to throw in our opinion and what we think and we give a lot of stuff but Michael was held back in check contending for Moses' body but he said, the Lord rebuke you. You can't get any worse rebuke than that. When God rebukes you, as a little boy said, you've been buked. I'll promise you. But these speak of evil whatever they do not know and whatever they know naturally like brute beasts in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the era of Balaam for profit and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love fest or feast while they feast with you without fear. Serving only themselves, they are clouds without water carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead pulled up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints.
to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers. We don't have any complainers, do we? Walking according to their own lust, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before you by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. On some have compassion, making a distinction. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to you who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. What a powerful Amen. book. It deals with the immorality that we see evident in our world that we're living in today. Now, when you talk about certain things, people get offended. And, and I'm glad that I'm not easily offended by you getting offended at the things that I say because your offense don't bother me. I'm held accountable to God for every word that I speak. And it has to be according to the Word of God. Now, the Word of God is powerful. And it is strong. It is short. But it is alive. And it will cut down and really cause conviction to come upon you. And Jude is talking about the people that have crept into churches. And he said they have come in unnoticed. That is a danger when we no longer have a discerning spirit among the body of believers that we accept everybody that comes through this door and the junk that they speak. And the words that they use in, in their slick, I call them slick hair jelly salesmen. Because they try to come in with enticing words. And that's what Paul said. I did not come to you with enticing words of man. But with the straight word of God. When these people come in. They begin to cause divisions in the body. And begin to tell you about. That oh you don't really have to live that way. God's word really didn't mean it to be just like that. But. I'm here to refute what they say. God spoke exactly what he meant to speak. Sin is still sin regardless of what anybody else tries to bring in among us. Now the bare fact of the matter is this. We know the difference between right and wrong. And if you really want to get down to it, you really know what this book means. Right is right, wrong is wrong. Sin is going to cause you to fall away from God. So Jude said, they have slipped in among you. I'll never forget, it was years ago that a gentleman come into the sanctuary at the old building and the Lord, and, and the Holy Spirit just spoke to and said, that's a wolf. Sheep's clothing. Watch it. And you know, it I've seen him. I noticed when he come in. But when you begin to tell me how great you are, you've just lost me. And if I hear the word I over three times, you're the devil. The whole 
religious realm is based upon what you have done, apparently, instead of the work of Jesus Christ. And when you begin to talk about how many people you say you've not saved anybody, you can't even save yourself. And when they begin to say I and I and what he has done and accomplished and all this, I, I wanted to stop and just go. Awesome. But what about Jesus Christ and all this? There's a lot of people that come in unnoticed in the body of Christ and they begin to spew negative things in your ear that is incorrect. And if you would listen to the Holy Spirit, He would go ahead and tell you that's not right. If your spirit is not bearing witness with that spirit, then you better get away from that spirit because it is not of God if you are truly walking with God. And this is what Jude is beginning to tell us. He said, you've got to watch these things. He said, and let me remind you of something. Let's talk about the children of Israel. I led them out. If you, there is a discussion of how many. There wasn't a census in the day of Pharaoh. But it's believed to be 2.3 million people followed Moses out of captivity. When they get to the Red Sea, it would have to open up a mile wide, Christian, in order for them to exit in the time frame that they exited to get across. You say, that's amazing. Because you see a painting and you think it's about like this aisle right here that God banked up the water. He rolled that water back for 2.3 million people to get on the other side. Here's the problem with this. Even though they went across and not one ounce of mud on their sandals. When they get to the other side, God lets the water come back, recede over Pharaoh, and the army attacking them, God delivered them in an impossible way. But when they get on the other side, they forget what God does just that quick. The danger that we live in today is we forget what God has done for us repetitively in our life. He has saved us, but yet He has healed our infirmities. He's done so much for us. And then we forget all of these benefits, what God has done for us, and that's what happened to the children of Israel. So what happened was God said, Stand back, Moses, and swallow us up 20-something thousand of them. That quick. You see, the thing of it is, we have got to retain God truthfully and right in our minds and relationships with Him. Just because you used to be all of that, make sure you still are. Because you can fall away from God and your place in Him. And he even talks about the angels. Remember Jesus said, Behold, I saw a third of the stars fall from heaven. He's talking about those that followed Lucifer that tried to overthrow God. And they are held in captivity until that time. But they will have everlasting punishment. Then he goes on to say, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? I heard preachers preach so much. If God doesn't come back soon, he'll have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. I ain't never seen the lack of freaks in my life walking around. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I saw... That, that post somebody said this guy's got ring uh, sticks through this way he's got hoops in his ears that big he, got, he looks like he's got horns up all that and nobody hired him for a job Amen. apparently he hadn't been to Hollywood they'd probably take him <laughs> some hard move Amen. but I see things going on today that I never dreamed in my life I'd ever see walk around the streets of our country and our nation I have never dreamed that I'd see openly what things happen in the sin that they're doing out here. And, and with Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened was this. There's two things that took place. Everybody said it was because of homosexuality, the lesbianism going on. That was one thing. What happened was they would not retain God in their knowledge. Amen. And when you begin to take God and shove him out of a place, that place is in for demise. 
Now, they were destroyed by fire. They got a taste of eternal fire when God burned the city down to the ground. Now, and, and I'm not to offend anybody here, but I'm going to tell you something. God's command from the very beginning to Adam and Eve was this. Go forth and what? Multiply. I used to have cattle. I had one bull and 25 birds. Why? Because I wanted reproduction. I didn't have 25 bulls. You figure that one out on your own. It just cannot happen. When I got ready to go to prom, I wasn't going down to the football locker room. Hey, I was looking at the cheerleaders. That's the natural order. When you begin to get out of the natural, Jude is saying, you're in for demise. And I'm going to tell you what. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Amen. And if you come up here and say, my son wants to get married, and he comes in with somebody's hairy leg as him, don't look at this preacher. I ain't going to do it. I don't want to have anything to do that is not natural, that is not right, that is called a sin in the Word of God, and I will not have anything to do with it. But yet, we're trying to excuse this mess in the world that we live in, and God said it's an abomination. Now, how in the world can we stand up and say that we but it's all right? God made God did not make you that way. God made male and female, and God does not make mistakes. Anybody hear me? Now you might get mad and say, Well, now listen, Pastor, there's exemption. There's no exemptions to the word of God. It's either right. Or it's wrong and that's the way that it is. Amen. And we need to quit making excuses and quit getting people in here to say now brother there's a different way. There's only one way and his name is called Jesus Christ that gets you to eternal life. Amen. Thank you Jesus. These speak evil of whatever they do not know. I have my own interpretation of these scriptures. I, I was blessed to have a, get a degree in theology and mine is different from so many people. I don't take spiritual advice from unspiritual people. Amen. Amen. I get tickled at people trying to quote the verse and they get back three words and say, you know what that really means. I do. I know what that means. I don't want unspiritual people trying to give me spiritual advice to get me to a place that they're not headed to. I'm just being honest with you. I know the way to heaven because Jesus revealed it in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you so. And he said, later he said, the way you know. Because he had already revealed. And Thomas said, Lord, how do we know? Where are you going? He said, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now what he's talking about, Randy, is eternal life. He said, the only way you're going to have eternal life is through me. That shed blood of Jesus Christ. Anybody hear me here tonight? Amen. I'm not teaching Romans. Okay. She's watching, I know. It says, but these speak of evil of whatever they do not know and whatever they know naturally like brute beasts, and these things, they corrupt themselves. 
Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Now he mentions Cain and Abel. Now Cain does what to his brother? Kills him. And he kills him because God accepts a sacrifice of the brother, not him. Now, Cain is offering vegetables. Nothing wrong with vegetables. If you want to eat healthy, eat vegetables. Nothing wrong with that. But sacrifice requires blood. Now, I don't know about this, but if I've got vegetables and you've got a bunch of sheep and I need to offer a sacrifice, i got a bushel of onions, two bushels of potatoes, zucchini squash, yellow crookneck squash, i got some eggplant, two watermelons, and three cantaloupe. I'll give you for that sheep. That's all that he had to do. All he had to do was go to his brother. But he refuted the law and wanted to do it his own way. Amen. Anytime you go to refute the law and go to doing things your own way, you're in for demise. Amen. Then once you get involved in that sin and you err, it makes you do irresponsible things. He killed his brother because God took his sacrifice and not his. Have y'all got two hours and 36 minutes? How many people have we killed? Brothers and sisters. You know what they really look for? Truth. Truth. We need the spirit of Abraham Lincoln to come back to the church to tell the truth. Amen. Does this make me look fat? Absolutely. <laughs> Get rid of it. <laughs> Randy Wheeler would be in the parking lot breaking up fights, shooting people in the leg, trying to get them. Because what does people really sometimes don't want? The truth. But the truth is the only thing that sets you free. And when you err, as Sister Mary Kester comes to you and said, the Lord woke me up last night and wanted me to tell you something. And she tells you the truth and it burns you and conviction gets so bad, you take her behind the church and kill her with a rock. <laughs> That's the spirit of Tim. When you reject truth, the spirit of Cain killed his brother. And they said, that's what happens when you begin to let things happen that in your life that you know is not correct. And they said, they run greedily in the air of Balaam, the prophet. Oh, Balaam was looking at how he could skin you for cash. He wanted to get rich off of you. He wanted to take advantage of somebody. And he was only in it for gain. Not for anything else. Then they said the rebellion of court. You know what happened to court? They go against the leader of God. They revolt against Moses. And they revolt against Moses and God said, Stand back. I'll kill him. This is God talking. Moses intercedes for the children of Israel a time or two. But the sons of Korah and all them get slaughtered up. Just in God by God. Thousands of them that go ahead and try to cause divisions. I always tell anybody, if, if you don't like it here, there's other churches. But don't try to damage and destroy everything. Yeah, if I get to the point that I'm no benefit here, I will leave. I will go. But you'll drag me out by my feet. But anyway, the thing of it is, is we got to watch rebellion. We have rebellion in families. Just tell your kids, go clean their room for the third time. You got rebellion. You got the earbuds. 
They don't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You cut that thing. <laughs> Stick them loose ends in that wall socket. They'll hear you. <laughs> now some of you better with me. It said, these are spots, verse 12, in your love feast. Or they feast with you without fear. You know, have you ever seen anybody that's almost above conviction? They have seared their conscience so much that nothing bothers them anymore. For the world of me, I don't understand how people can act the way they do in our world, especially when it comes to a child. I, I, I read the other day, and it broke my heart that a young dad was left with a child, and that child just kept screaming and crying. And, and he took that baby, crammed it in a microwave, mm -hmm. and killed it. That's not natural. How a mom can lock the doors on the vehicle, put it in drive and slam that door and watch babies drowned in front of you. That's not natural. Amen. And yet we let people without natural affection come in and sit among us and we don't know. We need a stirring of a gift of discernment yeah, 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 yeah. in the body of Christ again. The Bible instructs us to mark those which cause divisions among you. And you know what? We need to keep a, a keener eye. Don't just let everybody, because you can get online and get you some license to preach. But that doesn't mean you're called by God. We need to understand that the words that come from their mouth is backed by the word of God. When you get this, I don't care who delivers it, if it's a three-year-old kid or a 99-year-old woman, if she's giving you the truth of the Word of God, your spirit will bear witness with that. Be careful who you take spiritual advice from. It said they serve only themselves. They're clouds, but they have no water. You know what that means? They come in with a three-piece suit and have that Pentecost hair slicked back. They look good and they can have that Armani suit on and those lace-up shoes and look like Billy Graham. But if they don't have the Spirit of God in them, they're empty. And there's nothing. God's not looking at outward as He is inward. What do we have inside of us? He said, they're carried about by the winds. They like Autumn trees without fruit. You remember what happened when Jesus saw that fig tree and they were hungry and they got to it and there was no fruit on it? He cursed it and it withered and died. What God is saying in Jude is trying to portray to us. It makes no difference what you look like. If you're not producing the things of God, we better watch out for people like God. That. That's exactly what he's saying. We must be producing fruit. See, like raging waves of the sea foaming up. Have you ever been on the ocean and all of a sudden the storm blew? I worked offshore and, and and it would be just beautiful. It would be nothing but just wonder, still water. And you're out in the Gulf and you're there the next minute, you hear a horn, a little warning. And you look, coming across the water, it's nothing but black. And in a moment, you've got 80 mile an hour winds. You've got waves that's just whipping up on the side of that deal, and the top white capping Joe, and it's a storm that quick. But have you ever seen that foam when it's all over? That foam collects the filth. And it sticks. Go to the beach sometimes and see washed up on the driftwood. It is nothing but residue of that foam. What it got all that filth. And that's what he said. If you let them stay among you, they are starved. And after a while that junk will begin to stick on them. I will never forget sitting there one time. Sunday afternoon, we had made the rounds and they said, a storm's coming. 
They forgot to tie the helicopter down. We ran up to the helipad and was watching the helicopter being blown off the helipad. That's the only way we had to get out of there. Me and the camel, I said, somebody give me a rope. I'll rope that sucker. I'll tie him down. We held on to each other until we got a chain. Somebody brought a chain and we were locked arm in arm so the helicopter would go. Every now and then, you got to get arm in arm yes, amen. with somebody That's right. because the winds are going to blow and the storms are going to come and you've got to be careful that you're not washed away. Be careful who you let in. It said, now, in it, the seventh from Adam prophesied that these men also said, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them. Now, it is talking about the return of Jesus Christ. I believe in the rapture of the church. Now, this is talking about when he comes back to earth to take control. It said that after the millennial reign, after all that takes place, well, not after the millennial, but let me go back after the rapture, after the seven years of tribulation, we're going to be in a very cell. We're going to be in heaven. How do you know that? Well, because of Revelation chapter 5. Now, verse 9, it says that there's so many in heaven, it says there are every kidney, tongue, tribe, and nation, said, Holy, only he hath redeemed us by his blood. I don't know about you, but I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I plan on being up there before all this takes place. That's seven years of tribulation. After that, you know how Revelation ends. It's just going to be amazing. But if Jesus is going to come back and say, we're going to come back with him on white horses. If you don't know how to ride, I'm giving horse riding lessons. <laughs> we're going to come back. Everybody says, we're going to come back as soldiers. And we're going to fight. No, we're not going to fight. Amen. Jesus does it all. Yeah, with the word. It said, it's like a yeah. sword that comes out of his mouth. And he just takes care of everything. And that's what we're going to We're going to be with him. And remember this. Then we're going to rule and reign on the earth as kings and priests for a thousand years. Yes. Never grow old. Somebody asked me today, how old are you? And I said, none of your business. <laughs> they asked me, said, can you do push-ups? We're having a healthy something. Sometimes I like greasy fried chicken. But anyway... And, and, and the thing, we're not going to grow, we're not going to have any pain, no sorrow and all of that. Everything's going to be perfect. And then after that thousand years, he said, behold, I look. And there's a new heaven and a new earth coming down from God as a bride adorned for her husband. Jesus is taking us back to perfection. To perfection. Now, everybody said the pastor, you're talking about kings and priests, and we're going to rule and reign with him. I've already called Colorado. <laughs> y'all better find y'all somewhere else I, I, that's King Mike's territory there amen but the fact of the matter is Jude gives us warning be careful who you take spiritual advice from don't let them taint the gospel and if it's just benefiting them or trying to steer you away you better cut them loose Make sure you know what the Word says. And you know how you do that? Get your nose in. Read it. Make sure. Don't just take somebody's word for it. Make sure. That's why we have these things. And it's made so easy. You've got them on your phones. Amen. If you don't know it, Google it. And you can get it. Just like that. Amen. God bless you today. It's time for us to go. I love you. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Catherine. And Melanie, in there with the teens for leading us in some worship. Come Sunday and bring 76 people with you. Wasn't it great Sunday to have that great crowd? We had a house full. But let me tell you what got my heart raised. One young man come give his heart to Jesus Christ for the first time in his life. That made it worth it. Amen. Amen. Stand with me tonight. Heavenly Father, I love you. Thank you for this precious people. I love each and every one of them. And God, guard us, God, from any evil that would come. Give us a discerning spirit that we know what is right, what is wrong. And regardless of who tries to convince us otherwise, God, that we'll go to your word. 
and know the truth. And that's what will truly set us free. I want you to bless everyone here the rest of this week with your power, your anointing, your love, and touch. And we'll give you praise on the glory. Amen. 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 Hug six people. Tell them you love them. <laughs> love you, girl.